Welcome to the Daily Reminder Network. Heart Softeners by Sheikh Mu'iz Bukhari. My dear respected elders, brothers and sisters, and the viewers of the Daily Reminder Network, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa usalli wa usallimu ala ashrafi lambia iwal mursaleen, nabijina wa habibina wa kurati ayunina, Muhammad ibn Abdillah, alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi, afdalu salati wa atamu taslim, amma ba'd. We always begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is our creator, sustainer, nourisher, protector, and curer. We ask Allah the Almighty to shower his choicest of blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members, his companions, and all those who tread upon his path with utmost sincerity until the day of Qiyamah. Inshallah ta'ala, for tonight's heart softener, we will be touching on ghiba otherwise translated as backbiting. Allahu Akbar. Most of us, we participate in many gatherings throughout the day or perhaps throughout our lives. We participate in many gatherings. But what has happened sadly is now it has become something normal that it is considered to be something normal that in most gatherings, most of us, myself included, illa man rahimallah, we involve ourselves in ghibah, where we take pleasure in backbiting about others, in slandering others, in the defamation of others, in carrying tales about others, having false assumptions about others, having suspicions about others, having doubts about others. Allahu Akbar. And all of these, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, stems due to the hardness of the heart of an individual Allahu Akbar because the minute the person's heart becomes hard and evil and dark filled with jealousy hatred envy these qualities these root qualities result in evil actions manifesting on the limbs of that individual from the tongue of that individual in such a way where he starts backbiting about others where he starts envying about others and then slandering others having doubts about others false assumptions suspicions etc may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our hearts and save us all from those evil qualities ameen First and foremost, let us define what ghiba is, what backbiting really is. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the hadith is in Muslim, he once asked the Sahaba, Ridwanullahi ta'ala alayhi majma'een, do you all know what ghiba is? Do you all know what backbiting is? The Sahaba, Ridwanullahi ta'ala alayhi majma'een, they replied, Allah wa rasuluhu a'lam. Allah and his messenger know best. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam clarifies to them that backbiting is to talk something, the narration goes along the lines of these words, is to, is to talk something about your brother behind his back, something that he would dislike to hear you talking about him in front of him. If you were to talk about him, talk about him in regard to that in his presence, he would dislike it, you talk it behind his back. That is what is known as backbiting. Then a person from the gathering asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, what if, what if what I was talking behind my brother, what if that was true? What if in reality that was true about him? It may be about something about his appearance perhaps, something about his qualities perhaps. What if what I had spoken behind his back, what if it was true? Allahu Akbar. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then clarifies, it is only if you have spoken the truth behind your brother's back, only then it is considered ghiba, which is extremely evil. But on the other hand, if you have spoken something that is not true about your brother behind his back, you have spoken about a quality that is really not in your brother behind his back, it is something false, then it is considered as buhtan, Allahu Akbar. It is considered as if as a slander, as a lie, as a lie against your brother, and that is even evil than ghibah, that is even more evil than backbiting about that particular person. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. 
Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was walking with the Sahaba Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhi majma'in with a group of people. And in that group, naturally there are people who are with very high iman and perhaps with low levels of iman. Then there are people, Ahlun Nifaq, who have hypocrisy in their hearts. We don't know. All of them were walking with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam then suddenly said, where is so and so and where is so and so? He asks for two individuals. He calls for them. Both of them come. And now they were passing by a carcass of an animal, a dead animal which was on the ground. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam then asked those two individuals, get down and start eating that carcass. Allahu Akbar. The carcass of that dead animal which was on the ground, it was stinking, it was rotten. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked them, get down and eat that, Allahu Akbar. To which they were surprised, Ya Rasulullah, to eat that carcass? Why? They were perplexed. And even the Sahaba, Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhi wa jama'in, who were with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were astonished. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then clarifies along the lines of these words, that it is better for you to eat this for what you have done, what you have spoken bad about your brother a few moments ago, that is even worse than eating from this dead animal. Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Noble Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu jtanibu kathiran min al-dhan inna ba'da al-dhan Stay away from all types of negative assumptions. Stay away from false assumptions. Most or some of those assumptions are extremely sinful. They are a sin. They are considered a sin. Most or some of the false assumptions that you have are considered a sin. Do not spy on one another. Don't backbite about one another. Do not slander one another. Would any of you like to eat the flesh of your brother when he is dead? Allahu Akbar. Would we like to eat the flesh of our brother when he is dead? Go to the corpse and start eating his flesh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. فَكَرِهْتُمُ You would dislike it. You would hate it. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Fear Allah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who accepts repentance and rahim. He's the most merciful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of our sins. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was walking by two graves, the narration goes along the lines of these words, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated that these two individuals who are in these two graves are being punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was not knowledge or this was not something to state that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knows matters of the world of the unseen or that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can predict the future. Nay, these are all things that have been taught to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by Allah the Almighty. وَمَا يَنْتِقُوا عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ He does not speak out of his own desires. إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيُ يُوحَىٰ Whatever he speaks is from the divine inspiration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He states that these two individuals are being punished. And what was the reason behind them being punished? One individual, because he used to backbite about others. He used to eat the flesh of his brothers, Allahu Akbar. And the other one, he used to, he did not take precaution whilst urinating. Whilst relieving himself, he used to, he wouldn't take precaution in regard to his urine. He would let it splatter all over the place. He would make a mess. 
Allahu Akbar, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asks for a few twigs, a few branches, and he plants it on the graves. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam states, perhaps due to these, as long as these branches remain fresh, maybe the, the adab that is play, taking place in the qabr might be lessened, Allahu Akbar. Scholars, rahimahumullah, state that it could be because of the adhkar, because of the remembrance those branches make of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the adab could be lessened for a while. And this is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did that. Another instance, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went up on Isra and Mi'raj, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam states, I saw a group of people who had copper nails. Allahu Akbar, a very scary hadith indeed. It is upon us to reflect, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Very long copper nails, and they were scratching their faces with those nails, so much to the extent that the flesh was all coming out and blood was oozing. Allahu Akbar. And then they start scratching their chests, and the same thing was occurring there too. The flesh was coming out and blood was oozing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cries out, who are these individuals? And it was said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, these are the ones who used to eat the flesh of their brothers, i.e. they used to backbite about others, and they used to attack the, the honor of others, Allahu Akbar. They used to attack the honor of others, Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we strive so hard, Allahu Akbar. Look, we come for Salatul Taraweeh. We spend so many hours praying in front of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Then we come again later on for Qiyamul Layl. We recite so much of Quran. We give out so much of charity. We strive hard to do good deeds. Why? To please Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. To secure beautiful investments that will reward us in the Akhirah. But my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we are forgetting by doing all of those good deeds and afterwards going and back biting about someone we are easily taking all of those good deeds and giving it to that brother Allahu Akbar all those good deeds that we strive so hard and we do the minute we backbite about someone just one word Allahu Akbar one word we just say something bad about someone whilst he's not there and all of your deeds you're giving it to him my dear brothers and sisters in Islam on the day of Qiyamah just imagine an individual he'll come with mountains of good deeds mountains of good deeds and he will be so confident, thinking that, you know, I've got so much of good deeds. But then what will happen? People will start coming. People will start coming. You back, you back with me like this. You did that. You slandered about me. You defamed me. You did this. You did that. And they'll start taking away all of his good deeds. And my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, you know what happens after he runs out of his good deeds? After he runs out of his good deeds, you know what happens? And now he does not have any more good deeds to pay out. Then what happens is, still people will keep coming, and then their sins, Allahu Akbar, do we really need this? Do we need this? Their sins will be burdened upon this individual. Why can't we control our tongues? Why do we have to waste our speech talking bad about others? Why do we have to feel jealous about others? So what if he is a rich person? If he is a rich person, and he gives out his sadaqat, he gives out his zakah in secret, and that in reality he should be doing that. He, should not, he shouldn't be plastering it on his head that I am a great philosopher philanthropist why do we have to talk bad about that individual you know what he has all of this money and he's not giving out sadaqa he's not giving out zakah he runs around in an expensive motor vehicle he lives in a big mansion but he does not give out his charity if you cannot give out charity just keep quiet talk good about an individual or just keep quiet Fudail ibn Iyad, rahimahullah, he's reported as stated when once an individual came to him and told him that so-and-so is backbiting about you, or that person said to him, a person is backbiting about me. He said something along the lines of these words as if, you know, congratulations, be happy, because without doing good deeds, you're going to get good deeds, Allahu Akbar. Whilst you remain at home, quiet, people are talking bad about you, you just be happy about it. You don't have to worry, just be happy about it because without you knowing your account is being credited allahu akbar good deeds are coming on the day of qiyamah you will be surprised you will go up there and you'll see so many good deeds and at times you may think that you know what this may be the wrong file this may not be my file but because there'll be so many good deeds you will be surprised abdullah ibn mubarak rahimahullah he states something amazing he states that if you really if you ever think of backbiting someone if you ever feel like backbiting someone, backbite about your mother or your father. You know why? 
they are the ones most deserving of your good deeds. They are the ones most deserving of your good deeds. So if you backbite about your mother and your father, your good deeds are going to go to your mom and dad. So they are the most deserving of your good deeds. Why are you distributing all of your good deeds to everyone around? Why is you striving so hard to do so much of good deeds? My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, let us control our tongues. Because Rasulullah is reported to have said that the one who controls what is between his jaws and what is between his legs, i.e. his tongue and his private parts, I shall guarantee him a place in Jannah, Allahu Akbar. So let us look after our tongues. Let us keep what we say or before we say something, let us think before we articulate it. Because the minute that thing comes out, you can't take it back in. So think, think twice, thrice before you say something and always try to speak good about others. Talk good or keep quiet. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of our sins and may He the Almighty accept our good deeds and may He help us to purify our hearts from all of these evil qualities and may He unite us in the gardens of Jannah just as how He united us here tonight with our beloved Master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa akhir da'wayan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen jazakumullahu khair. Donate now. Go to www.thedailyreminder.org slash donate and stay updated by joining our network's social links.